Big stack hey guys, right I'm here, here with part two of and my then another one next to that one new with uh, that slightly oh, smaller. This big and stack so right today here. this part of the haul and is then going another to be books one that next to that one from Amazon. Uh, that's slightly smaller. One from the book and so today this part and of the haul is going to be books that I ordered from book from outlet. Amazon. So, one from the book really who can resist and those volumes that I've right. ordered so, recently. First one I from have book here outlet. is the one so, that I ordered from the book depository because really I had to have resist those garbage and right. So from the first one I have here is that one that I ordered the boy from the book with depository because I had to have this beautiful cover. Oh, no, it's, it's a only French available. author. I'm from the book depository. I'm not even going to try. And that is this author right here. Cuckoo Clock Heart by. So sorry that. Oh, it's a French author. I'm no no French. I'm not even going to try. It's this author right here. So. This is about a boy named Jack, I believe. Yes. Jack, who is born with um, a frozen heart because he's born on the coldest day that Edinburgh has seen in, I think, all of its history. The coldest day that anybody can remember. And so he is born to his mother with a frozen heart. And the midwife who is taking care of his mother um, decides to devise a way to keep him alive by manufacturing a clockwork heart for him and but this um, puts a lot of restrictions on him and his life. given certain rules by the woman who delivers him and those rules are that he should never he should try to stay away from strong emotion as much as he can such as anger or falling in love particularly that would be the end of him because his heart just couldn't handle it so this is a book that they made a film out of it not too long ago, long ago called Jack and the Cuckoo Clock Heart and it was on Netflix recently and so I already watched the film because I just couldn't help myself and I really enjoyed the film so I definitely want to give the book a try and then I think I'll try the film again just to see what I think how they stand up against one another and yes, I just love this cover. I think it's gorgeous. Very much looking forward to reading this one. The next book I have is All My Friends Are Superheroes, and this is the start of the Amazon order that I made not too long ago. And this is by Andrew Kaufman. And I've been, this is the 10th anniversary edition, and it has extra superheroes, I believe. Yeah, now with more superheroes, and there are little illustrations sprinkled throughout that are really cute they're all they all have this like blue hue Ooh, and the font is blue too that's nice yeah so it's just a really nice addition and I've been eyeing this for a while and then what really pushed me over the edge was when Carrie Hope Fletcher who's one of my favorite um, youtubers read this and it's now her favorite book and she just raves about it and recommends it all the time and she and I have similar taste in books, so I'm looking forward to picking this up as well. And then this next one I just stumbled across on Amazon. It's called The Mermaid Sister by Carrie Ann Noble. And look how gorgeous of a cover that is, too. Absolutely love it. It's beautiful. And it has kind of that, like, velvety feel on the cover, so that's always a bonus. And this, like I said, I just stumbled across it on Amazon when I was looking at the next book that I'll show you from my Amazon order and it is about a girl named Clara who lives with her sister and her and their guardian on the top of a mountain in a cottage and I mean that would be enough to sell me right there but um one day Clara's sister I believe her name is Marin yes she discovers that she has iridescent scales growing just beneath her skin and so they're kind of freaking out about this obviously and they want to figure out what's going on so they embark on a journey with their the two sisters embark on a journey with their best friend O'Neill I believe is her name so lots of cool names in this book to figure out what is going on and to get her to the sea so that she can live. I'm really in the mood for this type of story right now so I think I'm going to pick this up really soon I'm very excited about it. And then the next book that I have to show you is the one that I was looking at when I saw suggested for me uh, The Mermaid's Sister, and that is The Paper Magician by Charlie N. Holmberg, who is actually a lady, which I just thought was really cool, a girl named Charlie. And so this book is about Sienny Twill, I believe, which awesome name again, who is has just finished up her education at the... Haggis Praff School for the Magically Inclined and she is assigned I think they're all assigned a certain element or substance that they're 
Um, is there a specific brand of magic that they can manipulate hers? You guessed it, is paper. And she's kind of disappointed in this because I guess this is one of the lower regarded ones. She wanted to do metal, I believe, and but she gets to the cottage of her, the man she's going to apprentice under, and actually finds out that there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this paper magic, and so, so she grows to really love it. And then, I believe, something happens to her teacher, and she has to figure out what's going on and save him, or unravel the mystery around why people are out to get him. So this just sounds really interesting to me. Next thing I got from Amazon is something that I've already read and I talked about it in my April April wrap up and that is The Water and the Wild by K.E. Ormsby and this one is about Lottie Fisk who has always, um, she is an orphan and she lives with this woman who's not the nicest lady, doesn't care for her that much but she lives lived with her basically her whole life and there's always been this apple tree growing outside of her bedroom window that she's really loved and admired and considers a friend of hers and when she's six years old she discovers a copper box hidden in the roots under the apple tree and there's a note in it saying if you ever need anything just write me a note and leave it in here and I'll help you and it's anonymous of course so she begins receiving presents and letters from this mysterious benefactor on her every birthday and then when her friend Elliot gets sick and there's nothing more the doctors can do for him she writes a note and puts it in the box saying if you'll just save my friend I'll never ask you for anything again and so then the adventures and craziness kind of take off from there and she is swept into this whole new world that she never knew existed. She just goes on a great adventure with the people that she meets there and discovers new things about herself while she's trying to find a cure for Elliot. So it's a good story. I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say I loved it as much as I was hoping I would, but I gave it three out of five stars. So that's, it's also a beautiful book, of course. Very beautiful. And that, this dust jacket has that kind of parchmenty feel, which is actually my very favorite. So that's good. And then underneath the dust jacket, it's this beautiful bluish purplish color. So yeah, that's really pretty. This thing I got from Amazon is a book that I've also talked about in my April wrap up, but I haven't read it yet. It was in, I talked about it in the MG May Reads TBR part of that video, and that is Anyone But Ivy Pocket by Caleb Crisp. And again, another gorgeous book. <laughs> and this one, like I said in my, it's got the deckled edges as well. And this one, as I said in my wrap up and MG May Reads TBR has um, beautiful illustrations throughout. So yes, another beautiful one. And this one is about a young ladies maid named Ivy Pocket who just thinks she is a talented ladies maid and perhaps most talented little girl there ever was. She has quite the inflated ego, except others would not really agree that she's as fabulous as she thinks she is. And she gets fired from her um, current lady's maid job at the very beginning of this book and then receives a message that she is to deliver this mysterious locket I believe to this little girl by her birthday and so she takes on the task and goes into it full force and I'm sure gets into a lot of mischief and mayhem along the way so that's what this is about and I believe it's the first in a series it um, really has the feel of uh, the Lemony Snicket books to me so I mean really I'm not sure anything can live up to them, but we'll see. Hopefully this will be almost as good as those are. And then the little author bio in the back is really what made me think of Lemony, Sn Lemony Snicket because it says, Caleb Crisp lives in an abandoned cottage deep in the woods. For many years he has devoted himself to writing about a 12-year-old lady's maid of no importance. His only communication with the outside world is via Morse code or kettle drum. So that's just lovely and enchanting so that really pulled me in as well and I'm really looking forward to starting this one and hopefully it'll be great and it'll be a new favorite series and then the last thing I ordered from Amazon I believe I talked about in my April wrap-up as well as well I read this at the beginning of April and I'm sure you've seen it around it's Lumberjanes by Stevenson Ellis Waters and Allen this one is the first volume subtitled Beware the Kitten Holy and this is just a great story about these five ladies at their summer camp and all the crazy adventures they get into once they discover that there's some mystical, magical things going on at this camp that they need 
to unravel and they are all about that all about the adventure and it's just hilarious it's a fun adventurous read for all ages so I would definitely recommend this and now we are on to the books that I have uh, accumulated from book outlet orders over the past couple months maybe and the first one of those is Modern Fairies, Dwarves, Goblins, and Other Nasties as told to Leslie M. M. Bloom uh, by Miss Edith McFate and so yes this is just all about uh, Leslie M. M. Bloom going into these different mythical creatures and who they are and what they do and what you should know about them and it is illustrated it is the brightest green cover I have ever seen I'm not sure if it totally picks up on the camera but it is like neon green I didn't know it was gonna be quite this bright when I got it but it's quite a surprise yes and it's illustrated all throughout as well so that's really nice Actions are by David Foote and it's also one of the like floppiest paperbacks I've ever had I know that I have the fortune of living in America where there are a wealth of floppy paperbacks unlike in the United Kingdom and other places but this one is just something else it's a whole nother level like look at that I'm not even hurting it it's just bending all over the place so anyway yes I'm very excited to get into this especially since I just read Julia and the Art of Practical Travel which I showed in my last haul by Leslie M. M. Bloom and really enjoyed that a lot so I'm excited to get into more of her writing so there's that and then the next one I have is just one that I was um, browsing on book outlet as I do and I came across just and decided to get on a whim because I was already making an order and it was like three or four dollars for a hardback and it sounded cute and that is School of Charm by Lisa Ann Scott and I believe this is about a little girl named Chip who is a real tomboy and her father dies and she moves with her mom and her sisters to their grandmother's house and she's you know really struggling with this with her father's death and all the changes in her life and she is going through the woods one day and she comes across this little house with a sign out front reading Miss Bernie's Quirky School of Charm. Yes, that should be interesting. It just sounded cute to me and I can't really pass up a cute sounding middle grade book with a pretty cover. <laughs> um, especially when it's cheap because it's on book outlet. So yes, that is that one. Don't really know what to expect, but hopefully it'll be good. And then I got... A graphic novel, Explore the Lost Islands, edited by Kazu Kibuishi. And this is the second volume in this Explorer series that uh, Kazu Kibuishi has put together. I'm sure I'm butchering that name too. I'm so sorry. Um, and I've read the first volume and I really enjoyed that. It's kind of like a graphic novel short story collection about whatever the theme of the current volume is. Like this one is all about Lost Islands and the last one was uh, Explore the Mystery Box. It's just a great way to get into some new graphic novel artists and writers and just because there's, you know, there's a bunch of different art styles in here and a bunch of different stories. So it's nice to be able to experience a wide variety of art styles and story types and hopefully you can get some recommendations off of these. So the, I stumbled across this one day and I just decided that I had to have it and it is the Usborne Illustrated Stories from Dickens and it's a cloth bound and it's just gorgeous and it is, here we go, it contains condensed versions of five stories of yes five stories of Charles Dickens Oliver Twist Bleak House Great Expectations A Tale of Two Cities and David Copperfield and then it has a short biography section in the back about Charles Dickens and it's just illustrated all throughout in full color and Yes, I just thought it was really cool, just a nice addition to my children's book collection. And these aren't actually, I of course, as soon as I saw this, I looked them up on Amazon. And there are others, but um, I don't think any of them were available on Amazon. And this was the only one they had on Book Outlet. So if I could get my hands on the other ones, I would like to collect these. But yeah, I just thought it was really pretty and it was like $10 when it's regularly like $30 or $35. So I just decided to pick that up. 
Then the last thing I have for you, I showed you in my April wrap up as well, and it's a picture book, and it is Julia's House for Lost Creatures by Ben Hatke, who is the author of Z to the Space Girl series, which I've read the first volume of and really enjoyed. And yeah, I read this in April as well and really enjoyed it. It's just about Julia who moves to a new house by the sea and decides that she gets it all decorated and cozy the way she wants it, but she decides it's just a little too quiet. So she puts out a sign inviting lost creatures of all sorts to come and stay with her and things get a little hectic and crazy from there. So it's just a really cute little picture book story and I really enjoyed it. I love the art style. It's beautiful. Yes, it's just pictures like that. So yes, it's gorgeous. And this is published by First Second, who is um, a really popular graphic novel publisher at the moment. So yes, I would definitely recommend this for anybody who has kids. And if you know, you just you're an adult like me who enjoys these types of stories as well, I'd recommend it for you as well. It's a really cute, fun story. So that is all of the second part of my book haul. Thank you for watching this second part of the haul. Let me know if you've read any of the, these books, what you've thought of them. If you saw anything that you found interesting and you'd like to pick up, uh, let me know about that. I would love to know that I gave you some new recommendations. And if you have any questions about any of these books, feel free to ask me in the comments. And I love chatting with y'all, so I'll be looking forward to doing that. Thanks for watching.